Well, we've all been there because paper and book clutter could often be the worst. I don't appreciate it. Oftentimes, it could leave us anxious and a bit scattered. There have been nights where the thought of paper and book clutter haunted me, literally. So if you are fed up with it as much as I have been, stay tuned because in today's video, I will be showing you how to overcome the obstacles of paper and book clutter, as well as how to organize them so that your life will be easier going forward. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about today is the mail. To avoid clutter with mail, I recommend digitizing it setting up automatic payments and viewing bills through email. If you currently have a lot of paper mail and you wanna transfer it to your email, there's an amazing little app called Tiny Scanner. And what you can do for free is scan three to four items, send them to yourself through email and eliminate that clutter until you get it filed. For all of the other mail, I sort immediately into three categories, toss or shred, file or pay. There are a couple bills that I cannot do online or automatically, and for those I put on my desk, which reminds me to pay them. I file my previously filed tax documents, warranties, or other important papers in my long-term file cabinet. You can also get a less expensive option, which is a portable and does the same exact job. For the items I need access to weekly, I use a binder system, which you can make easily and is also inexpensive. Just buy a binder along with some folders with holes. I file things like logging my son's driving hours, and recently I filed papers that I had a contract and info regarding a rental for my brother's rehearsal dinner. I have learned that when I create a system and have a home for my papers, it makes it so much easier to eliminate all the paper clutter. Even when my life gets crazy and I may not have time to sort through my mail for a couple of weeks, it's always so much easier to do when I have the time with this no fuss method. The other thing I'd like to show you is how I organize my recipes in the kitchen. All I do is print out my favorite recipes and place them in a sheet protector in my binder. For me, this is so easy to access while cooking and easy to clean off if it gets dirty. And it's very nice because all of my recipes are in one place. The next thing I'd like to talk about with you is books. One of my problems with not being able to keep my books organized was because I actually had too many. So if you find yourself in the same situation, here are some tips to help you. Start out by going through your books, looking for duplicates. If you have some, donate those. But for real, there's been a few times where I think I'm gonna read something and actually never get back to it. So really try to reevaluate in this area. Next, ask yourself if you've read it or if you will read it again. Or you can ask yourself if you can get it from the library if you really do wanna read it again. Okay, so now let me show you how I keep my books organized. I used to have all these shelves packed with books which honestly made me overwhelmed and wanting to avoid that room altogether. So I decided to start storing books we didn't use regularly in a box in our attic. As you can see here, I have extra school books that we will use next year, as well as extra paper and binders and additional school supplies. Since my daughter has a smaller bedroom, I have used this box method for her as well to store her arts and crafts and her books, only in this situation I store them under her bed, which works really great for us. Then for our school books, I use a box for each child and store additional schooling items to the other side. I hope some of these simple systems will help you to get motivated and get you jump started on your mail and books. See you next time.